for example. So for, for example, uh, if I give uh, once again to the analogy of the, uh, I, I mentioned in, my, in our last video that uh, there are facts, there are ideas, uh, there are arguments based on those facts and ideas, and then there are stories. Um, and, and I recently finished this uh, three book series uh, by a Chinese guy called Chichin Liu or Liu Chichin. That's how they, they call the names, um, three body problem. Um, and th this book was exploring humanity on, on how they behave. And, and, and it's like, it's like, it's a chaos of the world map going on and they, they pick a random character with, you know, just like a human, like you and I, or uh, people like us put inside that chaos. And then from this person's point of view, explain that chaos. So, which is, which is interesting. Um, uh, and instead of pointing and picking facts and hard science factors, they, they explain from the point of view of the person how it looks like. It was very fascinating. Um, and, and, and make the reader go and dig and search more about those hard facts rather than giving them straight in front. So, so this is, again, that, the power of storytelling. That's what real life is all about, right? Like, life doesn't give you facts. Life gives you events, and then you have to figure out what the facts were. Like, th there's a whole field of study, uh, much underappreciated, unfortunately, uh, which is history, which is exactly <laughs> about going back in time and figuring out what the facts were from the narrative. And, and that's one of the things I was telling you is that everything is a story like there's not nothing else but storytelling even the facts we choose to highlight are part of a narrative right like you know uh we we justify things being important by you know the reason that made them important or the set of events that happened before they they uh th those facts came came to light and and this really brings a a, a super hard challenge for us when we write a book which is like how do we know what matters to tell our readers, right? Like uh, if you're writing a book, you can write about the stuff that you already know, but maybe your audience isn't ready for it. Like, like how do you know? Like what does your audience want? And uh, the, the cool thing about the 48-hour book method as we developed it is that it's not supposed to rely on your genius to know what your audience wants or foretelling or fortune telling. Uh, right? Like I'm not a fortune teller. I'm an author, right? Like I don't know what people want, but they can tell you, right? Like, so th this is, I think, one of the key things that many authors miss is this ability, the method to go out and then figure out what the people want to be told, not not the solutions, right? Because that's another anti-pattern. Like people don't yeah. tell you what solutions they're looking for, right? Like <clears throat> the story yeah. that comes to mind or the example that comes to mind is YouTube. You can go to YouTube with any question, like any problem you have, you know, the dishwasher is broken or your laptop isn't booting or whatever. You can go there with the problem and they'll figure out the solution. But if you go there with a solution, you will not know what problem is really is supposed to to solve. Yeah. So it's the I, same I think with that's books, very important right? Problem. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on a question on that. Uh, carry on. I have I have a question for you. Go for it. Problems. Go for it. Yeah. So the, the the thing about problem is that we think we know our problems, uh, and 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 this is what is going on in the clients, customers, or the book readers' mind as well. They think. They know the problem, but we don't really know the problem because the moment we know the problem, we know the solution to that problem or we create a, sol a custom solution. So everything that we tried that didn't work, they were actually, in my opinion, at least the way I'm seeing the world right now, uh, were the solutions we created to the problems we thought we have. But the real problem we had was that we never know the real problem. You know, the questions you ask uh, determines the answers you get. <laughs> in in a very simple form and and for the authors that makes it even harder to navigate because the, so the that's all we can get problems, right then? like we we can't get like for let's say we we use a method in the 48 hour book method which is the smiq the single most important question survey like there's no hope for us to get out of you know 20 to 100 words the real core of the problems that the people are facing but 
uh, also one of the things we argue in the 48 hour book method is that you're the expert right you're writing about something that you are the expert on you have experience right you have maybe even years of experience so obviously when when you see something you target on that all of or you 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 tag on that all the experience you have from what you did before so I think that the, the, the cool thing about the method is really that it, it allows us to start from those questions that those people have. And this happens to me a lot. Like I, I'm doing a, a talk at, a, at a, a client this Friday and they started with the question, hey, we want to hear about no estimates. No estimates is, is a, a planning and follow up um, strategy for software projects. And uh, we want to hear about no aspects. And then, then I went there and I started talking with them and I, I started to pull the questions, like what questions do you have? What, you know, what are you struggling with? What are the things that you guys are discussing internally? And, and it turns out that actually, even though the, the, the connection point was planning and execution for software product development, the, the real issues behind that were related to something that I have experience with, but obviously they were not ready to dive into, which is this, idea that actually project management is not a good method to develop software products right like project it's not just a method there's many project management methods but this area of methodology called project management it is not a good fit for software product development and and we we started from something completely different and that's the advantage we have as the authors that are experts right like the 48 hour book method is for authors that are experts is this idea that when you are the expert, if you just start asking for the questions, you can then start building the puzzle, right? You can start to understand, okay, what what's not there, right? Like what are the what are the questions they're not even asking, and why they might not be asking? So the the idea we started with the forty eight hour book method is is a book that writes itself, right? Like that that's that's why we start with collecting questions. And in fact, let me just show you what what we came up with. Uh, when we did that because it, it's an interesting uh, interesting tool to explore this this is an empathy map right like Jennifer is our avatar the person we are writing for uh, Jennifer is a, a product development consultant and uh, um, she she wants to get invited to speak at conferences that's what she wants that's like the 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 ultimate goal because it helps her in her career it helps her progress in her um uh company uh in terms of uh you know getting more responsibility but it also helps get better customers right like because you're more visible people know you they they know what they can rely on you for and then they hire you right and and we collected all of these questions about why isn't jennifer writing a book right now Right. Like what, what are the challenges that Jennifer has? Because she and, and this is a very important aspect of the 48 hour book method. She already knows that a book would be a great addition to her portfolio. But then she thinks, you know, I, I don't feel inspired to write. I don't even know what topic to write about. This is actually one of the big things the 48 hour book method focuses on. Right. The reason why I'm showing this is, is exactly that these things, these statements that Jennifer made while she was talking to us, of course, Jennifer here is an avatar, right? Like we talked to more than a hundred people to get this uh, done. But the, the, the things that Jennifer told us that helped us to put together this empathy map is what we're writing about. Like we're not coming up with the, the, the 48 hour book method is based on what Jennifer told us. It, yeah. It's not something we wanted to write is what Jennifer told us she yeah. needed. So when you're writing a book about writing a book, the, the common thing, you just go on Amazon and search how to write a book or any related term, pub, book publishing, self-publishing and all those things. Every single book that will show up will just tell you how the writing process goes, how to either shortcut your writing process or how to write or like, you know, it goes through just a simple, like not simple, but most common uh, questions are answers that have been answered like a million times, uh, which are how to compile the document, blah, 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 all the technicalities and, and, and uh, things that goes in the publishing and stuff. But going through this process, we realized that that was a very small part of the objection that people have um, 
which is I don't know how to 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 go through how to follow the process of writing a book. But then there are like a lot of things that goes before and after. So things like uh, there's not a single first thing. There's not a single book on Amazon on how to write a book that gets you invited to speak at conferences. So how how did we come up with this idea? We did not invent it. Um, yeah, no, Jennifer as you can told see, us everything. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, if you look at this map in front of you, the empathy map um, at the right side bottom corner, you will see a section called gain. Gain has different um, notes that Jennifer told us that she want to get out of uh, the, the, the process of authoring a book. We pick the one which we find that like, hey, we can add value immediately. This is something that Vasco has been doing forever. And then there are like other things uh, that we can build into to, to make it so unique. So our uniqueness didn't come from our exp expertise. In fact, we have to cut down a lot of different tools and expertise that we have that we originally would want to include in this book that said like, okay, it's not going to add value to what we chose uh, to help Jennifer with. So it also acted as like kind of a, a compass system for us to know what is the right direction. It also acted as the unique selling proposition uh, and make us stand out without actually trying anything to stand out. We just no, and and that's our... actually a very good point. Like the the idea that we have is that you know somehow I need to write something unique to to stand out. And in fact, the the, the best way to stand out is not to write something unique, but rather to write something that solves a real problem for a person. But here's the most important thing that they already know they have. Like I see a lot of uh, authors trying to come up with contrived and sophisticated problems that people don't yet know they have and, and they have the solution for. Well, that doesn't help you because they're not looking for you, right? Yeah. Like Jennifer is looking for an idea on how to get herself invited to speak at conferences. Yeah. Um, there's is an observation that I had um, about 10 years ago. I joined a company called TIE, the Indus Entrepreneurs, um, as the chapter manager. And basic activity of that company, which I was doing, was facilitating um, knowledge exchange between angel investor, venture capitalists, and potential startups and startups and students who we wanted to encourage to become startups and stuff. The most common thing, and, and I'm, I'm embarrassed by accepting that I even today come across my own ideas that way, that approach uh, was that people have an idea and they see around and nobody else is doing an idea. Just the fact that nobody else is doing excite, excite them. Oh, this is so unique. Nobody else is doing it. It's going to be the only one in the world. It's going to be the next Google. It's going to be the next Facebook. Like who, whatever is in like whatever they have in their mind they're competing with and when they explain these ideas to others it feels very convincing but most of those ideas just disappeared um in in, in the world it's not not the ideas not the execution it's also the 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 something we call product market fit in 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 the product world and in my 48 hour book method world, I call it uh, your promise to your market, but the promise that you're making to your market, uh, if that promise is not acceptable in the market, I mean, uh, look at Elon Musk, he's sending people to Mars. Uh, is there a market for it? No, probably f five generations later, there could be. I mean, I, I'm in education field, like if you see broadly, five generations or maybe 50 years down the line, if I'm if I'm there and I'm an industrialist about education, I may consider opening up a university in Mars, like because there are now pay people there. There's, there's there's circumstances that created that opportunity. But today, if I want to open an, a university in Mars, nobody else is talking about it. I would be the first one. Is there a market? Is there a promise market fit to that? No. Uh, this is what this process helps. Yeah. So um, so I I wanted to add to that that this promise you make, like the I think you also called it uniqueness, which is, uh, in, in my perspective, it's not uniqueness that we are looking for. It's usefulness. It's value that we are looking for. 
but uh, in in the 48 hour book method that uniqueness that value comes from an actual need that the customer already knows they have let me show you the the landing page for the book and we've reviewed the question this in I a, have asked in a for previous you video don't, don't, do for, you don't forget don't forget where where you're going because I just wanted to take the promise yeah uh, and and highlight that like this is this is how we sell the book literally yeah. this is the sales page right yeah and and what's there what's at the top is what Jennifer wants the most it's it's yeah. Jennifer's goal she wants to get invited to keynote at conferences in her industry. Yeah. This and is this is what we are talking problem. about when we talk about this promise. It's something that they already know they want. It's not about building a world that doesn't exist and making a promise. It, yeah. It's about getting them something they already know they want. And do you know the opt-in rate of the for the geeks out there who know anything about marketing? How many what percent of people who saw this page ever uh, join to become a beta com beta reader or beta community member. Do you have a, maybe rough idea? I think I remember once we were checking it was dabbling between 60s and 80s in percentage. So eight people or six people in the worst case scenario out of 10 people who saw this page. This is that powerful. Now, there are not millions of people seeing this page because they're not interested in going and speaking in conferences. But there are few people out of those few people. This is like eight out of 10, six in the worst case scenario out of 10. Say like, I'm up, I sign up. I want to read what you have to say. Yeah, and, and this is very important because we, we talk about product market fit in, in the in the Lean startup community and product development community. But in, in the 48 hour book method, we, we're, we're talking about something much more important than that, which is solving a problem that people already know they have. And, and if you think about this for a second, product market fit is an unknown. It's, a, it's an uncertainty. It's something that you need to have a process to even find out what that might be. And it involves money and time and people and a lot of uh, you know, patience. But what we're doing here, what the 48 hour book method is about, is about removing the guesswork from getting that product market fit. And it's, it's very simple. What you're asking for, what you're asking people is what are their biggest challenges, right? And why those challenges matter. That's the SMIQ or single most important question survey. When you know people's challenges and why those challenges matter, you already have product market fit. Now yeah. that doesn't guarantee you know how to market it. That's a different thing and adds the expert there. And there's a lot of chapters in the book about how to market the book. But the, the idea here is that the customers are telling you, they are helping you write the book by telling you what they struggle with and why that matters. But th these are the two most important questions. You don't ask them what they want. You ask them their struggles. Okay. So for you and I, I mean, I'm from half background in product development, thanks to you, because you are my exposure to, to the product, uh, product world. For us, it, when somebody say that you need to find out what they want, we know what to do. But for everyone else who's not from this background, or even if they are in this background, they have not connected the dots yet with their book and the creating their product for the first time. Because when you're creating a book, you're actually creating a product. You realize it or not. Um, how do you determine that what, what, what your customer wants? What's the thought process behind and how, how do you... So, so solve this problem of finding out what your customer wants or what your reader wants. By the way, I just checked it's 63% at the moment and that's based on the last three years of data Yeah. So. for the 48 hour book method opt-in page. Um, so how do you find out what your customer wants? So this is the, this is the, the million dollar question. I mean, if, if we knew the answer to that, we could be millionaires, right? Like we could just write books and and uh, uh, create products and whatever. So here's the thing. It's not about what they want. In fact, what I tell the product managers that I work with is that you never ask people what they want because they don't know either, right? And, and if you're a 48 hour book method author, the first thing we tell you is that you're the expert. You, you, you do not know what they want. You only have the way to get there, right? Like you, you can't tell people how to get to, let's say, how to get from uh, LA to San Francisco if they want to go to Cancun in Mexico. Like that's, that's useless, right? I'm the expert in navigation. I can tell you how to get from LA to San Francisco, but they don't want to go to San Francisco, 
And that's what most product development companies out there and most book authors try to do is tell people how to get from LA to San Francisco when in reality they want to go to Rio de Janeiro or, Can or Cancun in Mexico, right? So what, what we want to find out, this is the most important part and, and the, the first part of the book indeed, uh, the 48 hour book method book, which is we want to do the single most important question survey. And there are different steps to do that. We, we can dive into that in another video, but the single most important or uh, question or SMIQ survey is all about understanding their struggles. It's their struggles that matter, right? As, as uh, uh, some people attribute this to Steve Jobs, it's not your customer's job to know what they want. That's your job. But here's the thing, and this is my addition. It's the customer's job to know what they struggle with. It's not your job, right? And this is the thing that most people go wrong. It's like, I know what they struggle with and I'm going to write the solution for that. Well, you don't know, right? You have to collect that. That's that's what the, the empathy map we were just talking about shows us, right? Like this is a constant reminder and, and Ed is probably fed up with me sell, telling him, just go to the empathy map, right? Very often we've had these conversations in our, in our weekly calls where uh, Ed is asking, how about and what if, and I, and I tell him, you know, just go to the empathy map. Honestly, I'm more fed up of myself that like why on earth I, I deviate away from looking at this empathy map but that's what I do. Um, if, if it's not in front of me, I tend to forget the, the wants and needs and, and the problems of, of Jennifer. I stop stepping myself, like stepping in the shoes of Jennifer. And, and hence, uh, I may be the reason of frustration for you, Vasco, uh, that like, why on earth he keep on deviating away from the topic? And this, from the... this actually highlights the biggest problem for book authors out there. They don't have a clear avatar. They don't yeah. know who they are writing for. And we have it. We, we gave it a name. We call it avatar, not persona, specifically because we want to separate the concept of persona, which is used and abused in the product development world. And, and we want to, to focus on someone we write for, like we're writing for this person. In fact, what, what we do when we coach authors is literally have a conversation with Jennifer. Like literally, when you don't know, just you know, look at a wall or look at a cutout part of, of some character and ask that person the question you have in your mind, like the project, that's why avatar is there. Project your customer into that avatar and ask the questions that you want. Have a conversation with that avatar. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, and the best, the best is to actually that. have that conversation and, yeah. and you can do that online. Thank God these days, it's easy, right? Just go on Reddit, find a, a sub community that represents your avatar and talk to them. Exactly. And chances are, if you're an expert, which we think you are, uh, because you're listening to this so far, um, you already have talked to people or in, in your life or you have served or there are people who paid you money to solve cer certain problems or you know, they are an area in, 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 in your expertise that you can talk to people um, or, or reflect on your talks before to find out, uh, at least get some starting points on, on, on this direction. Uh, so, uh, Vasco, I've got a couple of more questions for you. All right, like the last two questions that we need to wrap up. Right, Let's go okay. For it. So, once again, coming back on the macro, on, on the micro scale of the people don't know what they want, why do you think, because it, to, to, to many people, when I talk with people, it seems like an, a, a new concept. When I tell them that the, you don't know what, what your customers want, they, they're like, ah, uh, why is it a new concept? And, and, and most people don't think in this way. Why people don't know what they want themselves when you ask them what you want. And also as an expert, why your expertise doesn't expertise doesn't help you know what they want. So you're an expert. You're supposed yeah. to know everything. So that there's there's two anti patterns that play together. Kind of they they build on each other for that. The first one is authors write for themselves. Many authors, especially nonfiction, they write for themselves. Like they are the avatar, right? And and of course that's useful. That's a good starting point. Maybe for a blog post and a couple of tweets. But then you need to quickly get market validation that what you're writing actually resonates with the people you're actually writing for, right? Because if, if you write for yourself, you're, you're going to have a very happy customer, but it's going to be one customer, right? It's you, period. There's no other customer out there 
that is exactly like you. So that's the first anti-pattern. And then because we write for ourselves, that's the second anti-pattern, we write about solutions. And here's the thing. Uh, our avatar, Jennifer, does not know the solutions that we provide her because she's not an expert in book writing and book marketing. Like, that's our job. That's not her job, right? Her job is to know that she wants to get invited to keynote at conferences in her industry. Our job is to figure out how to get there, right? Like, you yeah. know, how to contact conferences, how to use the book to start promoting your work as a speaker and as a consultant, even before you finished writing the book and so on and so forth. And th these are the two patterns that work together to cause that problem. Authors write for themselves and we very often write about solutions instead of writing about problems. So we're, we're taking that off in the 48 hour book method. We start from the SMIQ survey. So we start from Jennifer's problems and through the SMIQ survey, we try to figure out what are Jennifer's goals. So we write for her goals. We write for her problems. And yes, we do provide solutions, but those solutions are not the headings of the chapters or, or the sections of the book or the title of the book. That's not the solution. The solution is the content of the book itself. What we have are goals and problems as the headings of chapters and, and even the title of the book itself, right? Like the title of the book is the 48 hour book method. And it's there because it is a promise we're making for the Jennifers out there who think that writing a book is an incredibly time consuming, boring and lonely job. Well, it isn't. Which it is. <laughs> it isn't actually. It's a 48 in, in, hour in, process. You, you, go make from, it. <laughs> you go from having an idea to having your book out there selling yourself and your services in 48 hours. And we've done this with quite a few books already. So like that's that's perfectly possible. And that's what we're promising Jennifer. Yeah. That's why it's it's there in the title. Right. So yeah. we're, we're not writing for ourselves. The 48 hour book method is not for ourselves. In fact, we already know all of the things we're writing about. We're writing for Jennifer. And because of that, we write only about Jennifer's problems and Jennifer's goals. And, yeah. and here's the key thing. Here's the tagline for 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 this uh, conversation, which is all we have to do. All we have to do with the book. There's nothing else we need to do. All we have to do is to help people solve a problem that they already know they have. The moment you start writing a chapter or a section and it feels like you're convincing people that they have a problem, stop immediately and go back and ask the avatar you created, what are you struggling with? Yeah, yeah. Um, even Coca-Cola, for example, they they tie their product not because they don't solve the problem. I mean, addiction could be a problem. People who are addicted to drink, like uh, talking of myself, but um, they they associate it with the with the status. So if you look at Coca Cola ads, they they're solving a problem of youth finding status or a place in their market, like in their in, the, in among their peers. So so. You know, it's like everything solves a problem and you're no different. You're solving a problem. Which problem you're solving, uh, this method help you find that problem, you know? Absolutely. Well, that's a wrap. I'll see you guys in the, we'll see you guys in the next video. Right.